Half a mile from the county fair, and the rain came pouring down. Me and Billy standing there. All right, Chuck, so this is our first session of prolonged exposure therapy together. Um, I want to kind of just give you an overview, let you know what we're going to be doing in today's session. Um, so first, um, I'm going to give you just some basic information about kind of the logistics of therapy, um, let you know what prolonged exposure therapy is, uh, what the goals of the treatment program are, um, and what the different things uh, that we'll be working on throughout therapy are. I'm going to make sure that I'll go over that for you and that you have a good understanding and can ask any questions that you have. Um, we're also going to spend some time talking about your symptoms and kind of what we think might maintain your symptoms and um, what's keeping them going. And um, after we do that and talk about kind of the rationale for uh, the treatment program, we're going to get some more information on uh, the trauma that you experienced and the IED explosion. I want to make sure that I kind of understand everything that uh, you were going through then, what your experiences were. We're going to watch a video about PTSD um, and then I'm also going to teach you a short kind of breathing technique that some people will find helpful. Yeah, that's a lot. Yep, so we're going to got a lot to go through today, uh, but we'll make sure that we stay on track and if anything doesn't make sense at any time, just let me know and we'll uh, make sure I answer your question. Okay, I've got, I've got to get out of here by, uh, um, you know, at about uh, at 10.30. Okay, all right. Well, so our session's uh, going to take about 90 minutes today. Um, so we'll try to do as much as we can, okay? And um, as you know, we're going to be recording each session, so I'm going to go ahead and start the tape now. Um, this will give you a chance to be able to listen to the tape after we um, finish today, too. All right. Um, so just to give you some background on the logistics of this prolonged exposure therapy. So like I said, each session is about um, an hour and a half to two hours, so 90, 90 minutes to 120 minutes. Um, we're going to meet once a week or more, um, and sessions are, we're probably going to do about 13 sessions or so. So basically that means you're going to be um, in therapy for a couple of months, two or three months. Um, how does that sound? So it sounds, sounds okay. Okay. It, uh, it sounds like a pretty short amount of time for, I mean, I've been dealing with this shit for a long time. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, you're leading up actually really well to the next thing, which is this therapy is pretty intensive. We're going to be working hard um, in each session. Um, like I said, we'll be meeting for a couple of hours. Um, so hopefully, um, as, as we work together, you'll actually be able to see a, a good decrease in your symptoms even over those couple of months. And I know you haven't been, you've been having these symptoms for a long time, so it kind of makes sense that you might have some questions about whether that's going to work or not. But hopefully as we kind of get to know each other more, um, you can start to feel more confident about that. Well, I'm willing to try anything. Okay, you know. good. Um, okay, so I did, you know, I mentioned that sessions can be intensive sometimes, um, and I definitely want you to know that it's okay to give me a call between sessions um, if things are just seeming like they're starting to feel overwhelming, if your symptoms are starting to get worse, or if you have any other questions. I want you to feel um, comfortable giving me a call here in the office. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's take a step back and kind of think about kind of these symptoms that you've been having after the ID explosion. Um, you know, we t I know a little bit about kind of the types of fears and anxieties that you've been having um, and some of the difficulty you've had coping. Um, I'm wondering for you, you know, you've been through a lot of stress in your life and you've experienced a lot of different things in Iraq. I was wondering, you know, what what do you think, what's kind of your sense as to why you know, these memories of the IED explosion are really the ones that are bothering you now? Well, I mean, I think that it's because it was just, uh, it was just shocking. Um, I mean, you know, I had, I had been in country, I had seen lots of things, but, I, you know, I, that was the first time that um, I had ever seen or been part of big afterwards sure no problem tons but like um, so I don't know why I, I, guess I, I guess I don't know why um, that one pops out you know I mean from time to time other other memories do bother me and you know um, I'll get dreams of all kinds of things mm -hmm. um, but you know I think that you know I as like I said the other girl I, I can't remember her name um, 
that's the one that, you know, if I could, if I could erase one memory, it would be that one. Mm -hmm. Well, so you said it was the first time it ever happened for you, and it sounds like maybe those, the, you know, the, that one just seems to bother you the most. It had the most kind of, like, intense, you had the most kind of intense reactions. Okay. And that, you know, that makes sense with other veterans I've been working with. I've, a lot of times they um, will also say that it's kind of like the first, um, the first time they went through a really scary combat experience is the one that comes back to them the most. Um, you know, is there anything that's kind of else that's kind of like different about that first IED explosion and those memories um, compared to the other stuff that you've gone through in combat? Well, I was, I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, I ended up, I guess, doing okay, but you know, I, I felt like I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, you know, I, I was pretty worried for myself. Yeah, so you felt helpless, you felt kind of scared and really scared for yourself. Okay. Um, when these thoughts are coming to you, when, when that memory keeps coming back to you, how do you handle it? What do you do? Uh, well, you know, I'll, you know, I try to avoid that by, because you know, they come back mostly at night, so, like, I, as I was telling to her, you know, I'll drink a lot at night. Um, I try to get, get out in front of memories a little bit, you know, um, anticipate, you know, what situations you know, will trigger them. So it's like, you know, I won't watch the news. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got a whole bunch of stuff that I do that I only really became aware of after I had, had that conversation. Sure. I just can't remember her name. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, I, you know, I guess if I'm actually having one, um, you know, I'll try to, to, to distract myself with something else. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I'll get up. Um, if I can kind of, you know, like literally shake, shake my head, shake it out of my head. Right. Um, okay, so you're kind of distracting yourself, you're um, trying to focus on something else, uh, maybe trying to sometimes help drinking helps kind of mm -hmm. get you to sleep at night and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, it makes sense. Like these are really painful, distressing memories. Uh, so it kind of makes sense to try to get rid of them or try to avoid thinking about them. You know, we, we definitely, our nature is to kind of avoid things that um, make us uncomfortable and that kind of thing. Um, so how long does it last? Like if you're able to push the memories out of your mind, distract yourself, um, how does that work for you? And Well, you know, it, it can work. I can, you know, I can, um, I've gotten pretty good at sort of nipping in the bud or pushing them away. Mm -hmm. um, other times if I'm like driving, sometimes I can get sucked in and I don't really realize how long I've been sucked in and that's that's kind of frightening because then I all of a sudden I just kind of I'm aware that I'm driving but I don't really have that big of a memory of like the last 30 seconds or three minutes or, or right. whatever it is so I don't feel like you know I'm paying attention um, mm -hmm. so you know sometimes I can shake them off pretty good and other times they just kind of own me a little bit um, it's like it's like I'm kind of back there I mean I know that I'm not back there right uh, I mean, I know that I'm in my car. I'm not crazy, you know, but uh, it just feels like I'm back there again. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, sometimes I win and sometimes that feeling wins. Okay. So, so I mean, it really sounds like what you're saying is that the um, distracting, kind of pushing those thoughts away works sometimes, works in the short run. You might feel better for a little while, but then at the same time, like, you're still having these days where, you know, you'll almost feel like you're back there and you can't really shake it out. Uh, shake yourself out of it so um, you know it seems like that you know, avoiding the thoughts and avoiding the memories short-term solution but it's kind of only kind of temporary um, it sounds like your symptoms have kind of been going on and on even despite trying to avoid them yeah and it's gone on for years now right okay. yeah um, and so you know that that's kind of what characterizes PTSD I mean these the, the anxiety that you that you experience and these thoughts that you can't get out of your mind, you know, pretty much everyone who has um, a traumatic kind of combat experience like you have, um, has that, those, those reactions sort of right immediately. Um, but for some folks, those symptoms just kind of keep on going and are distressing and bothersome and really kind of affecting your life. Um, and one thing we think might be maintaining that is actually that avoidance. So pushing the thoughts away and trying to distract, um, 
yourself from the memories may actually be kind of keeping those symptoms alive over time. Um, does that kind of make sense to you, even if it might be hard to believe? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't want to have the memory. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, you know, you know. so no, I'm not, okay. I'm not really getting, yeah. getting it. Okay. Well, so um, let's talk a little bit more about kind of why we think that is. Um, you know, so for one thing, it sounds like, like you said, you know, it works in the short term to kind of push these memories away. Um, but oftentimes what we find is like, have you ever noticed that the harder you try to stop thinking about it or not think about something, um, those memories just kind of come back stronger? Yeah, that, that's when I said like that, that's what I'm losing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, when you're and losing. They just keep kind of, they're on me. They're like right behind me and I can like take a turn, right. but then like it's right there. Yeah, um, exactly. You know. Okay, well so, um, hopefully some of your questions will get answered and we talk more. Um, the, the main kind of goal and premise of this prolonged exposure therapy is um, to work against that avoidance. Um, you know, we, we can see that avoidance is maybe relief in the short term, but pretty unhelpful and ineffective in the long run. And um, exposure therapy, this prolonged exposure therapy, is about taking a different kind of approach, trying something new. So pushing these thoughts away seems to have been work, um, has not really been working for you um, over these past years. Um, so here's, you know, we're kind of offering another approach. Um, so there's a couple reasons why um, facing this avoidance and kind of confronting your fears might be helpful. Um, you know, this is kind of like facing a bully, you know, when you're back in school. I mean, have you ever had a time in your life where you had to really kind of confront something that was kind of scary, but in the end, you, you know, it was it was in order to get to a goal that you really was important to you? Well, I know how to deal with bullies, you know? Yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you gotta step to them, for right. sure. Okay, and what, what's the alternative if you don't? Um, well, then you just kind of, just like, then like they don't know that they can't do whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so that's a good way to think about it. I mean, you know, who has the control in your life right now? Is it you or is it PTSD? Well, I guess talking to you now, I'm starting out my doubts. Your doubts? So if you had to choose one, who's more in control? Um, I don't know. Okay, all right. I don't know. Fair enough, no. Um, I mean, it sounds like when you, at least when you, you said you have those moments where you feel like you're like back there, you're driving in the car. Yeah. Sounds like, yeah. you know, at least the symptoms are in control then. Um, yeah. And facing that bully kind of through PE therapy and prolonged exposure, uh, hopefully, you know, the, the goal and the outcome is going to be that you can take that control back and that you can get some freedom back into your life um, that PTSD may have taken away. So if I, if I face it, you know, it might go away. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, and I, I don't expect you to necessarily like believe that currently as is our first session of, of therapy, but um, you know, if you're willing to kind of accept that as a possibility, that's sort of you know, where, where I hope you could be at at this point. Well, you're the, you're the expert, you okay. know, so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, like I said, I'm willing to try anything. Okay. Um, and you know, I, I don't I don't get how thinking the memory will make it make me stop thinking the memory, but um, you know, right. I, I this is making a little bit more sense. So you're just saying kind of like, don't avoid it, don't roll over, kind of just face it and see see what happens. Sort of thing. Right, exactly. Um, and you know, there's two different types of avoidance that um, you see in PTSD. You know, one is kind of like you said, trying to distract yourself from the thoughts, um, trying to push those memories away. Um, another, the other type of avoidance is you're kind of avoiding real life situations that might bring up memories of the IED explosion or um, you know, kind of make you feel like you're back there. So like, what are some of the uh, real life situations that you're avoiding now because they cause a lot of anxiety and remind you of what happened? Well, I, mean, I don't know if it's anxiety, but I definitely avoid, you know, I'm definitely, like I said, I'm trying to stay one step ahead. Okay. So, you know, I want, I want to be in an environment where that's, I know what's going to happen, it's controlled. Um, you know, I'm not, 
not going to go. Obviously, I'm not going to go to the baseball games here to see the River Dogs because there's fireworks sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I'm not going to go be around fireworks. Right. And the fireworks, the, what what happens? Do they trigger memories or? Yeah. At one time, Fourth of July, the the first Fourth of July, when I got back, I you know I was I, I was out with people, um, and I had you know I hadn't even been thinking that about anything about any of that. I mean, I, you know, I was drinking. And, but then when the fireworks started, like everything just sort of changed and right. um, kind of ended up making an ass out of myself. Okay. Did you, um, did you end up staying? Did you have to get out of there? What happened? Yeah, no, I got, I left. Mm -hmm. I left and um, okay. I probably should have known because I was pretty wasted, but okay. I just left. Mm -hmm. So River Dogs games, you're avoiding those now because the fireworks. Um, what else might you be, what are you avoiding? For, like for the noises? Maybe for the noises, or maybe they're just you know, things that don't feel safe to you anymore, or make you feel uncomfortable? Well, I mean, basically that's everywhere. Like, I, I feel good on my couch at mm -hmm. home. Like, that's sort of my cave. Right. You know, and I, I, everything's like in order, and, um, but you know, it's just a crazy world. Right, It's, sure. just, a, it's just a crazy world, and so, um, you know, it's not that I can't feel safe. You know, I can feel safe going to church um but i still don't like i still don't trust it like you know well and so okay so let, let me ask this then you know right now you've got your bubble kind of at home on your couch maybe church is pretty good too um what about before you even went to iraq how were things different oh I, it's just normal did you go other places then you feel safe other places than in your house and at church yeah yeah it felt it felt safe everywhere basically except for when <laughs> when I was fighting bullies or, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, you're definitely not alone with that feeling either. You know, um, most folks coming back from combat, you've had these traumatic experiences, you know, they start to kind of feel like, you know, their their safety zone or their comfort zone is much smaller now. So it's, you know, you can control your, you, you kind of know what's going on. You can keep yourself safe in your house, but outside of there, it's like, you know, all of a sudden you sort of know what danger is And so, you know, that kind of avoiding situations um, in, in real life is also something that we think really keeps PTSD symptoms going. Um, so, for instance, like, um, so maybe going to the store, is that something that causes some, you know, some anxiety, some, something that you really don't enjoy doing anymore, going to the store? Yeah, I don't go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, if you're thinking about trying to go to the store again, what are you telling yourself? Like, if someone was like, hey, Chuck, can you run and get me a quart of milk? You know, what, what are you thinking about that? Uh, I'll, I won't do it. I'll come up with some bullshit excuse. Mm -hmm. or, um, and it's not like, I mean, now it's not like people don't know. It's like a little game we play. Like, right. You know, how 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 is Chuck going to be lame today? Like, yeah. what, you know, what, mm -hmm. you know, how am I going to disappoint, you know, people or friends? You know, so I got, you know, I, I guess people have stopped asking as much. Like, I don't really, my phone's not ran off the hook anymore. Well, so um, it sounds like even over time, you know, as you continue to kind of avoid going out places other than your house, you know, it, it's it's made it even harder to get back out and do those things. So it's like the, the more times you've avoided those opportunities, you know, people maybe start expecting that you're not going to do it anyway, so the opportunities kind of reduce and... Um, you know, that seems to kind of keep the anxiety going. You know, it kind of keeps that, that like, message that going out beyond my comfort zone is going to be really dangerous. It seems like it just kind of makes it harder to get out beyond your house and live your life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, I can't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. okay. You know? Um, so, you know, what do you kind of hear me telling you at this point um, that if, if um, that the more the more I don't you know the more I just sort of keep to myself and you know don't go out then the easier it is just to sort of be a hermit mm -hmm. um, okay. and and if I if I start you know if I get a memory maybe I 
instead of pushing it away, maybe just have it and just kind of see see what happens when I try that. Okay. Okay. So so you're getting the, the message that you know avoidance in your mind and avoidance in, in real life is probably not you know the most effective solution right now, and that going kind of confronting the memory and confronting these situations is is more helpful. Um, and that's definitely the, the premise of PE. Um, you know, one thing that folks kind of learn as they go through this treatment is that once they do start kind of confronting, say, these real life situations, like getting out and kind of practicing going to the store, um, folks learn that those situations, even though they feel really dangerous in the moment, um, and initially, those situations over time, you know, they start to learn that those situations actually aren't dangerous. So like for you, before you went to Iraq, did you have any trouble going to the store to pick up a few things? No, no, it just wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so it totally makes sense like why, you know, the world seems more dangerous now. Um, and in P, we're kind of asking folks to um, take take the opportunity to, to relearn, to re, you know, go back and experience going to the store and kind of learn for themselves that, okay, the situation is generally not very dangerous. But I don't think it is safe. safe. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. thing. I think that if the world is dangerous, right. you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't agree. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that it, it can be a pretty fucked up place. For know? sure. And actually, I mean, I, you don't have to agree today by any means, um, as long as you're kind of willing to listen and um, accept it as a possibility. Would you accept it as a possibility? Uh, sure. It's okay. Theoretical possibility. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so that's one thing that uh, folks learn through kind of confronting their fears is these situations aren't um, as dangerous as they initially seem. Um, you know, the other thing that oftentimes can make it really hard to like confront your fears is that it starts to that when you do confront your fears you start to feel this sort of anxiety and discomfort and it's really scary um so like the time with the when you were at the baseball game with the fireworks um sounds like you start to feel really kind of you start to freak out yeah okay yeah. um and you had to leave right okay why you know what do you think would have happened if you'd stayed there i probably would end up getting a fight okay so those symptoms would have just kept getting worse and worse. You would have kind of lost control, right? Okay. Um, and so again, that's a really kind of common thing that goes along with um, PTSD is like feeling that um, if I do go into a situation that causes anxiety um, and discomfort, like that, those feelings are going to last forever. They're going to go until the point where I lose control completely and I do something messed up. Um, so again, um, prolonged exposure therapy is about kind of confronting those feared situations in a in a gradual and kind of systematic way so not you know just throwing your right back at the river dog stands with a bunch of fireworks but confronting those fears in a systematic kind of gradual way um, and so that you can learn that you actually can handle those situations and that you um, won't lose control if you stick with it um, that's another thing that I don't necessarily expect you to like wholeheartedly believe right now uh, but as long as you're willing to kind of accept that it might be possible mm. what questions do you have well I mean does this work for people that's a great question um, so you know like like we said kind of back at the um, when you first came in you know this this treatment is one of the ones that has the most kind of scientific research behind it um, so people um, you know, have psychologists have done a lot of scientific research looking at whether this works and um, the data says it does Beyond that, um, you know, one thing to think about is, you know, even though avoidance, you know, seems like it's kind of helpful in the short term, if that really was effective, then I'd be sitting here telling you how to avoid more and how to avoid better. Um, and so what we've you know, seen through kind of working with lots of people and studying it pretty um, strongly is that it actually does work if you're willing to stick with it and kind of experience the discomfort that goes along with it initially. Don't try. Okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, that's good. Um, so let me tell you about kind of the, we've talked about how PE is about confronting your fears and reducing avoidance. Um, sorry, what's, what's PE? So the prolonged exposure therapy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, do you have any other questions about that? Um, 
No. Okay. I'm going to drop down. Okay. Good, good. Wasn't sure. Right. Okay. Um, so there's two kind of main components and two things that we're going to be working on together the most across our, our therapy sessions. Um, and the name of the therapy, prolonged exposure. So um, exposure just means confronting your fears. And it's kind of exposing yourself to situations and memories that um, you used to avoid. Um, and there's two different types of exposure that we do in, in our sessions. Um, the first one is called imaginal exposure. Um, and this basically just means revisiting um, the actual um, trauma memory. So for you, kind of going back to that IV explosion, revisiting that in your mind um, instead of pushing it away. And so I know that that seems like um, kind of counterintuitive and why would I want to do that? So like, what questions do you have immediately about that? Um, well, I mean, you want me to, to start doing that? Like when it comes, when it pops up, like because I can guarantee you, I'm going to think about it later today. Sure. Especially exactly. after coming here and talking with you. Right. Um, so when it pops up, that's what you. I should just kind of not push it away and think more about it. Well, so not not necessarily right at first. Um, imaginal exposure um, is a technique that we're going to use in the session, um, and, and I'm going to be working on that. You know, we're going to be working on that together, um, oh. and oh. it'll be, you know, kind of a pretty structured thing that we do through the sessions. And it's we're not gonna start it today, we're not gonna start it next time, we're gonna give you some time to um, kind of get used to this, um, to the therapy, um, and we'll make sure that you're feeling pretty prepared for that. That being said, you know, it, it would make sense if you start thinking about the explosion and you have those memories more after today. Um, know that, that that kind of is part of starting treatment, you know, um, just thinking about having to do this stuff can bring up those memories more. So just kind of be prepared for that. Um, and if things are, if you have questions over the week or whatever, you're welcome to call me about that stuff. Um, so the imaginal exposure, so revisiting uh, the memory, it's gonna be here in the therapy environment, you know, with me. Um, we'll make sure that you know, you're know you kind of in a, doing it in a way that you know, you're generally comfortable with. You know, I'm not gonna push you to do anything, you know, to think about it you know, any harder than want to in the moment, but I am going to kind of encourage you to, um, to work hard. Um, so the reason why we feel like that is helpful um, is that, you know, it actually kind of allows you to understand and process and digest that experience that you had at the, in the explosion. Um, so right now, you know, we think about it kind of like eating a Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. So you've got this big mess of meal that you just ate sitting in your stomach. Um, and right now, because um, those thoughts and memories are being avoided, you're not really getting a chance to kind of work through them and digest them. Um, imaginal exposure is about um, getting in there and kind of digesting what happened, processing your memory of it, and allowing it to, to kind of, allowing yourself to kind of work through it. And so, you know, when you are digesting a big Thanksgiving meal, is it comfortable? I mean, how does it feel? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, sometimes you've got to lay down on the floor. Right. Like, it's just flat. Right. You know, sometimes, like, yeah. you're sweating, and, you know, you're just like, why did I do this? Um, but that, that is a part of it, you know. But what we know about working through this with um, lots of veterans is that those feelings are temporary. You know, they don't last forever. And so what we found is that going back, revisiting the um, event in your mind can really help kind of make meaning out of this very kind of confusing and meaning, you know, yeah, scary situation. Um, it can help you kind of understand it better um, so that it doesn't kind of keep coming back. Um, that's not to say that we're going to erase this memory um, or even make it a happy memory or anything like that. Um, it just means that we're going to be working through it so that you can think about it without feeling super overwhelmed. So what do you hear me, me telling you at this point? So what, I mean, this, that makes, that makes some sense to me. Like, I, I, I get that. Like, I'm, you know, if, you know, if I keep thinking about it over and over and over again um, with you, if I keep coming, because you said I'm going to come up 13 times, um, it, that makes, that makes some sense that like, okay, you know, maybe I'll get used to it a little bit more, you know, or maybe I'll get past a certain point that, like, um, is, you know, keeps kind of popping up. Um, 
you know, it's just because right now I don't, even, I don't even try any of that shit. Like, it's, I, you know. Right. But that, that kind of, that kind of makes sense, but I don't, you know, I don't want to do that, like. Right. And, you know, if you didn't feel that way, then, you know, you probably, we wouldn't need to be here, like, doing this. So the, the fact that you feel that way is normal and it makes sense, um, and that's why we're starting this treatment program. You know, right now, if you did have to think about what happened, um, how different do you think it would be from actually, like, experiencing what happened? I mean, do you think it would feel about the same to you? Sometimes it feels, you know, like I'm there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so really, and again, I'm asking you to kind of suspend your disbelief, but you know, what we've seen with folks is that through kind of gradually revisiting the memory in here in a safe environment, um, over time it starts to feel um, like you can think about these memories without actually feeling like you're back there. Um, any questions? No. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, so that's imaginal yeah. exposure. Um, the other type of exposure we already talked about a little bit is called in vivo exposure, and that just means in real life. So uh, gradually of facing these situations in real life that um, are important to you, important for you to kind of experience, um, but that you're currently avoiding because they're causing distress, they're, you feel like you might freak out in those situations. Um, and really the same um, kind of, the same kind of thing happens in, the, in that in vivo exposure. So the more that you kind of confront those situations and stick in the situation, um, the easier it becomes. Have you ever had any experience like that where you had to like, you know, kind of force yourself to, you know, get up and go through some pretty, you know, intense stuff, but the more you did it, the easier it got? So I guess, I guess basic training was like that. Mm-hmm, okay. You know, the whole fucking, like, horns in the morning, getting up and people yelling at you and all that. Right. Like I got, you know, at first I was like, wow, it's, it really is like the movies. Um, yeah. And then after a while I got, you know, got used to it, I, asked, I got pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. you know? um, exactly. So this is like, I like to really think about it like basic training or boot camp too. You know, it's, it seems like, you know, you're climbing this wall at the beginning and it might, it seems like it's really difficult, but you, you know that it's important for you to stick with it um, because of what comes at the very end. You know, you've got to get through basic training. So the more you stick with it, the more you keep coming back and like doing the exercises and following the, the drills, the better, um, the easier it becomes, the stronger you get. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any questions about it? Well, I mean, I don't see how that's going to make the, you know, I don't see how that's going to make the world safer, but I mean, I understand that you're saying I can get, I can just get better at it. I can get better at being. So, so kind of right now, you know, you're saying that you have, you've learned that, you know, the world is dangerous, um, and you know, that is a really common belief that kind of comes along with PTSD and it tends to keep those symptoms going. So this world is extremely dangerous. I'm kind of safe nowhere. Um, if you didn't get out and try some of these situations and see for yourself, um, would there be any chance of Testing whether that belief was really real, whether how, how true that belief is. No, no, I guess not. Okay. No. I mean, it seems like you know you're here trying to get some treatment, so it seems like you, at some point, it's important to you to test that belief and try to. Yeah, I mean, there's certain there's certain things that I want to be able to do now without sweating bullets and looking mm -hmm. like a maniac. Right. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and you know, like yeah. I said, like, um, this really seems to be the best and the fastest way to do that. Um, and so even though it seems like it's makes no sense and it's really going to be really uncomfortable you know, at this stage in the game, I just ask you to kind of put your trust in, in me and, you know, call my bullshit at some point if you feel like I don't make any sense, um, but at least give it kind of a try. Okay. Okay. Um, so we, we talked about like feeling like the world is dangerous and, and that can really you know, 
affect your wanting to get out and try things and, and kind of then you know, the symptoms of anxiety could go keep going you have more time to think about what happened in the past it kind of bothers you more um, we also a lot of the vets that I work with kind of feel like um, the longer that they these symptoms go on the less less capable they are of kind of handling stress you know like like how how do you feel like you are at handling stress um, well I guess not I guess not good at all I mean I, you know when when you ask it like that it's like you know I, I'm not I try to you know I get out of doing things um, you know I think you know I'm, I'm used to thinking that like oh you know, you know I'm I'm good at like manipulating the environment and being in control and because I'm always thinking I'm always like staying like I said one step ahead um, so I mean that sometimes I feel like that's I'm, hey I'm doing pretty good like I can anticipate um, you know but then I guess um, you know you take you know things like you know like I mean an ass that was over 4th of July and you know um, you know lying you know lying to my mom about I can't go to the store and I guess that you know I guess I'm not in that light mm -hmm. you know doesn't seem like I got my shit together at all right you know um, right so and there's kind of yeah. two sides to it like mm -hmm. you know well you know and as as a marine like feeling sometimes like you don't have your shit together like how is that like for you oh that sucks mm -hmm. I mean that sucks you know I look at other you know, other guys my age, and you know, I'm just behind. I'm, you know, I'm way behind, and that's that's not what the whole plan was. The whole plan was like go in service, get all this experience, like you know, ser you know, serve, um, and then you know, I was gonna you know use GI Bill, and I was gonna like go places, right, right. do shit. You know, I was gonna, um, and I just feel like I'm way behind. You know, like this stuff. I mean, it just got me way. You know, off schedule, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. okay. you know, like less than. I mean, yeah. less than. Like the the. I look around the the guys that, you know, didn't, you know, didn't go to combat. Um, you know, they've got houses and they've got wives and they've got jobs and they've got like they've got a life. Right. I'm you know in my to my my mom's basement like, doesn't doesn't feel good at all. Right. Yeah. Well, then I can see how that just that those feelings could make it really hard to try to get out and confront things that are feel dangerous to you and feel like you know scary to you I can also see how you know kind of having those thoughts of well I'm less than I can't keep it up the way these other guys can um, can also you know start to make you think wow you know even if I try to go to a river dogs game like I'm gonna freak out I'm not gonna make it um, and, and we find that that those types of beliefs are also kind of what keeps these symptoms going because it you know, kind of keeps you in that bubble and um, gives you more time to kind of experience these really unpleasant feelings. Um, what are you, you know, thoughts about that question? Okay, all right. So I know I've really gone through a lot of information kind of about what therapy is. Um, what's not clear at this point? No, I think it's pretty clear. Okay. I mean, you know, um, I you know I appreciated you saying that I don't have to agree with it all. You yeah. Know? Um, but you know, I I'm not you know I'm not that big of a loser that I'm not you know that I'm gonna <laughs> come here to the VA and like deal with all the bullshit of getting here and then like you know not do what my doctor tells me to. Like, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try. Great. Well, and that's yeah. exactly the attitude that is gonna be helpful and it's gonna you know help us work really well together. Um, so good. I'm glad. And I'm glad you feel comfortable kind of being honest with me about that too. Um, and that's again another reason why we're taping the, the session today too, so you have a chance to kind of go back over the week, listen to all this stuff again, um, come up with more questions if you have them too, okay? Um, well, so the next thing that we'll do then is just watch this video that I think will also maybe kind of answer some questions and maybe make things clearer, okay? So Chuck, do you have any questions about that video that we just watched? Anything seem like like it didn't line up with what we've already talked about? 
You know, I mean, like, um, I've, that guy was, you know, that guy was, he could have been me. Like, he, you know, um, you know, a lot of what he said, like, I was sitting here and I just couldn't, you know, fucking believe it. Like, he was, like, saying things that, that I feel that, you know, that I just don't, you know, I don't really think about in those terms or whatever. I guess, you know, I didn't, like, you know, but it's, you know, that guy was, you know, I could tell he was actually really there. He was actually mm-hmm. doing some of the shit that I did and, um, you know, it kind of, kind of fucked him up too. In yeah. The same sort of way. Good, good. I'm glad that you, know, you felt like you could relate to him more. It sounds like you feel maybe like you're not so alone in this then. Yeah, I mean, that's, exa- that's exactly how I feel. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm like him. Good. Okay. You know. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, so now at this point, what I want to do is just get um, some more information. I know that uh, when you did your assessment with Ashley, you talked a little bit about. Ashley, that, that's, that's her name. There it is. The um, you talked a little bit about that IED explosion. I know that wasn't the only thing you went through too. So um, I'm gonna get some information about um, kind of what your experience was, how you've been feeling about it. Um, let me check in about that. I mean, so of, of all the different combat experiences that you've had, um, you know, wh- which one does really bother you the most? Uh, you know, that that's the one that you know. There's some horrible horrible things, you know, and, you know, we killed a lot of people, um, and I saw a lot of, a lot of, a lot of just shit that you just wouldn't ever think that you'd see, that you just right. never even would imagine that, like. All right, Chuck, thank you so much for giving me all that great information. Um, this is going to be really helpful for us as we're working together, especially as we start a national exposure in a couple sessions. It's really helpful to know all these details ahead of time, so thanks for going through. So the last thing that um, we're going to do today is uh, I'll coach you through and teach you uh, just a kind of short breathing technique um, that some people will find helpful, something that you can give a try over the next week. Um, and if it doesn't seem to work, that's fine, um, but I want you at least give it a try. Um, so the reason why we kind of go through the this type of breathing technique is you know, we know that breathing and your emotional state um, can be related sometimes. Um, and you know, have you ever heard that? Like, what do people tell you to do when you get really stressed out or get really angry? Or yeah, it's to say, take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. Right. How well does that work for you? Um, well, yeah, sometimes like I can, you know, take take a deep breath and you know, just say that gives me a couple seconds I need to move past it or, or whatever is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, they taught us how to do that. Um, you know, actually in the military. Right. Okay. And so um, a lot of people think that, you know, taking big, deep breaths as soon as they start to feel stressed out can be helpful. Um, but it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. I mean, it's, it's, we know that if you're in a really stressful situation, if your body is in that kind of fight or flight mode, taking in a lot of air definitely is helpful because your body really needs it. Um, but if, when you're in a situation that's not dangerous, um, it's actually can be so do you have any questions about the breathing exercise? Uh, no. Okay, cool. All right, well, we've gone through a lot today, but we've checked off everything that we needed to cover. Um, so I am gonna have you do a couple things over the week. I'd really like for you to kind of keep this in mind over the week. Um, so I'm gonna give you a uh, this tape of the session. I'd like for you to listen to the whole tape once. Um, that way, if you have any questions, things don't make sense that uh, we talked about, um, kind of either write them down or just keep them in the mind so that you can ask me when you come into the next session. Um, and also um, have these handouts here that talk about kind of the rationale for prolonged exposure therapy that we've talked about. So I'd like for you to review those handouts. Um, and again, if you have any questions, just let me know. And then also that breathing exercise, I'd like you to take um, several minutes each day to kind of practice that, okay? Okay. All right, so here's your handout for you to review. And here's your tape. Questions about that? Gonna have to get a tape player. (laughs) (laughs) It'll be a good investment. Yeah.
Half a mile from the county fair And the rain came pouring down Me and Billy standing there With a silver half a crown Had to pull up a fishing rod